Yo, what's good everyone? This is AO Boxing from Adiba, and here's my post fight review for Emmanuel Navarrete vs. Oscar Valdez. And my prediction for this fight was wrong. I had Oscar Valdez winning because I thought he could exploit Navarrete's tendency to lunge in, but that did not happen. This fight was a Mexican war, but Navarrete pretty much controlled the fight for the entire time. The volume, pace, endurance, power, along with the awkwardness was too much for Valdez to handle. But it was Navarrete's jab that won him this fight. Navarrete has a 6 inch arm reach advantage over Valdez and he utilized that arm reach perfectly in this fight. From the opening bell to the end of the fight, Navarrete was throwing the jab consistently. The jab established Navarrete's range and kept Valdez at the end of his punches. The jab dictated the distance of the fight. Because of this, it made it difficult for Valdez to close the distance consistently, but it was perfect for Navarrete as it allowed him to set up his offense, especially that leaping left uppercut. Since Navarrete was working behind the jab, he was not lunging in as much, thus providing little opportunity for Valdez to counter him. It seemed like he learned from his last fight against Wilson. The most interesting thing to me was how Navarrete was using his jab. He was often pushing with the jab, which was an effective strategy against Valdez. Since Valdez uses a static high guard, the push jab on Valdez's guard would often leave Valdez off balance and then forcing him to reset. The jab was also used to probe, manipulate, and occupy Valdez's high guard. This is something that Shakur Stevenson did when he fought Valdez and it was effective. And we saw how effective it was in this fight because this tactic allowed Navarrete to break through the high guard of Valdez and essentially turn him to a punching bag when Valdez was not fighting. Valdez did find some success whenever he did close the distance and was able to counter punch, but he was waiting for too long and was hoping to land that one big shot, but it never came. Navarrete on the other hand was just working the entire fight. Based on this performance, I think Navarrete is fully capable of beating anyone at 130. Prior to this fight, I had Oshaki Foster and Joe Cordina beating Navarrete, but this fight has changed my mind. I still think that they are capable of beating Navarrete, but that's a very tall task. It looks like Navarrete is accustomed to 130 now, and he has improved on the mistakes that he was making before. Both Foster and Cordina had struggled in the past against pressure fighters, and Navarrete is a different breed of a pressure fighter. The volume, arm reach, awkwardness, along with the power could be too much for those two to handle. Navarrete's next move should be to unify 130. Going for Undisputed may be difficult since the other belts are on different promotions and networks, but he should at least get one belt. I see a lot of fans saying that Navarrete could compete at 135 and fight guys like Tank and Shakur and the other lightweights, and I truly believe that Navarrete could be a player at lightweight, but we have to let that time come and we can't force it. Shout out to Oscar Valdez though, that dude is a dog and is a good fighter, but I don't know where he goes from here. He's too small to fight at lightweight and he'll most likely have to wait to get another title shot at 130. But in the meantime, who would he fight? I don't think Top Rank has a deep roster at 130 or any interesting fights that he wants to take, but maybe he could fight Mark Maceo. I mean, Mark Maceo just lost and is moving up to 130. Both guys would be coming off of losses, so that would be a good crossroads fight. But who knows, this is boxing. Anything can happen. But thank you for tuning in with AEO Boxing from Adiba. Hit like and subscribe and more content's coming your way.